So here we go. This is my video in which I focus not so much on my particular setup, but issues that I've thought about while playing a Shadow Knight, how I handle them, and uh, my various solutions. They're not necessarily the only way. In fact, they're far from the only way. And this is very much focused on live server, level 115, a uh, significant number of AA Shadow Knight. That's what I play. That's my perspective. Um, I'm an alt. I am thinking about playing a Shadow Knight, and I, I try to come up with the best ways, but I know there are many, many different approaches. There's also how aggressive you want to be, how much you're willing to micromanage every detail as opposed to making the play a little more um, easy and convenient. I probably have a balance between the two. I may not have always made the right decision. Um, but anyways, the first thing I'm going to talk about is my approach to handling buffs. The Shadow Knights, we've got a lot of buffs we've got to do that have, uh, you know, 16-minute duration, 12-minute duration, 4-minute duration. Or you memorize and it takes 2.5 minutes to come up or 30 seconds to come up. And how do you do this where you're not giving up all your spell slots for buffs that you only have to cast every 4 to 16 minutes? This is my solution. It's not... The best way, I mean, it's, it's what I do, you know, and uh, these are the ones I'm looking at in particular, and I'll show you kind of how I handle it in a guild hall setting. Um, what I tend to do is memorize one buff at a time, which can be very, done very quickly. Hotkey memorizes the buff, casts the buff, and so... In the case of Stormwall Stance, because it takes two and a half minutes, um, sometimes I will cast Rejuve with that when I'm not really saving Rejuve for like a little bit of extra DPS. Um, I always cast Skin first because that refreshes Skin for 13 minutes. Then I memorize Stormwall Stance and I just forget about it until it's ready to be cast. So cast Skin, memorize Stance, forget about it. Notice that, oh, it's time to refresh, hit stance, memorize skin. Refresh skin, at some point you'll memorize stance and let that um, two and a half minutes tick down and just use it whenever you want. Though you can always make it quick with Rejuve. Um, I use the Eye of Holgresh um, to, out of combat, bring up my hit point buff through touch of Zandikar and um, the AC buff from Torn of Anguish. And I'll show you my hotkeys. That should give you a sense of kind of what I'm doing here. These work for me, uh, but they may not work for you. I've struggled. You know, do I really need stance? No. So sometimes I don't cast it. But I've got it there. This is a quick and easy way to bring it up. Okay, now we will move to the next subject. So now I'm going to talk about kind of the three what I think of as the AE spells, as opposed to AEAAs. We've got one that does damage, is a life tap, and aggro. One that is just damage and aggro, and one that's just aggro. Insidious, Abhorrent, Bargain, and Contempt. So my approach, basically, the three AE spells is I swap in Insidious for skin whenever I feel like I'm going to be pulling multiple mobs at a time or needing to aggro multiple mobs onto me. I also like to keep Confluent Disruption up when I'm such of a situation. I rarely memorize Abhorrent Bargain or Contempt. That's my style. Um, I've got a lot of other spells that I'm casting and I feel like I can't spare the spell slots. Though I have gone, you know, if, if you're pulling stacks and you know you've got lots of mobs all the time, generally this would be in a zone where I am not stressed, then I go with the uh, Abhorrent Bargain. I would put that in as my second. I don't know any time I feel like the need for contempt. Other people may feel differently. These topics are in no particular order. Um, they're just, as I think about them, I figure let's throw this in. In this case, what belt do you want? Do you want to go with the belt that slows the mobs? That was definitely my first choice, and I used it for a long, long time. I was uh, 
slowly won over the argument that the thread spell, the boon of potential, which gives you 5,000 additional damage to every spell you cast, including dots, though it's not 5,000 each tick. It's divide, that 5,000 is divided up by the number of unextended ticks that a dot may have. Um, I was won over by the additional life tapping you get, the additional DPS you do, and I have bagged my slow belt in favor of a threads belt. It's there's probably not a 100% correct answer. Um, research yourself. I'm not unhappy with my decision. So the next uh, random topic will be what tribute do I use? Uh, what's my approach? Well, I find that tribute's fairly easy to come up with at this point in the end of the game. So I run it pretty much continuously. I like Eyes of the Hunter. I like Fury of Combat. I pass on second chance because I'm a tank. And what am I going to do if I pop back up with a divine invulnerability and no hit points? Um, it's just a mess. Maybe you can recover from it. Maybe people have different experiences. Power of Suffering, Power of Will. Um, you probably have better focuses. I don't think that helps. Twinge of Pain is something I always take as a necro. It's a great focus, but in this case, because all of our dots are instant, there's really no reason to take it as a Shadow Knight. Bulwark of Honor sounds good. It's 85 additional AC. For me, that works out about plus 36 AC. I've chosen to skip it, but I definitely can appreciate that every little bit of AC is nice. Um, heroic Stamina, extra hit points, useful. Uh, you can take that. I don't run it, but I've got a lot of hit points at this point. Um, you know, most of the other stuff just has no benefit whatsoever. Um, make your decisions. Go with it. It's not going to have any practical input on the game. So next topic is why I love my Holgrish Elder Beads. And obviously there are other methods, cheaper methods you can use to get them. But it's, I, f I love it because it makes it very easy to out of combat proc various buffs. Um, I like cheesy techniques. So for instance, yeah, I will duel um, a pet using class before an important battle and kill the swarm pets or whatever so that I can uh, proc a um, mortal coil. But in particular, if you're a Shadow Knight running without a healer and you get hit with a dot, um, like Restless Ice, it will kill you because you don't have a mob. If you're, you, you, you kill the mob, but you still have the dot and it's taking you down, you can use your Holgrish Elder Beads to tap up and overcome that Restless Ice. And so I have a little heal button I use for just that situation because I run into it when I'm trying to solo in Western Wastes, doing mercenary tasks, or in Great Divide during work. You know, wherever I happen to be, it can be a, a lifesaver, literally. I was always underwhelmed by Necromancer Swarm Pets. They're better than some people credit for them credit them for but they're not great i i think chattering bones is pretty nice it does decent damage it lasts for 110 seconds you can now redirect it with the pet swarm command so it's a dot that keeps on giving and um like i said the damage i get is is very uh acceptable it's a technique it works I'm not being original in coming up with this idea. Um, I've known people to use it quite often. It's, um, it's just a tool that you can use if you're challenging content, like new expansion content you haven't geared up yet. And that's all I can say. Most people know the difference, some don't. Um, it was asked of me recently, and I explained it this way. That's all. If you're an ABC Shadow Knight, then mana is going to be an issue. So you want to keep Velux Bite and Vicious Bite of Chaos on cooldown. You know, they're going to generate mana, and Velux Bite can generate 
significant mana, you know, sort of at the low end 1%, maybe at the high end 10%. Um, hit Thought Leech. You know, if you're low on mana, go ahead and hit it. Use it. Don't don't just let it sit there. Um, then it can start that 20-minute journey to when it can repop. Um, and then you're going to learn to to manage a little bit, you know. I ch- tend not to refresh my dots. I might refresh uh, Vulok's Bond just because it's more hit points. But the mobs, trash mobs, they're going to die. On a named, it's different. Your dots are going to be 50,000 DPS maybe if you get them all together. But and, and taps, you know, I just tap as DPS, but... If mana becomes an issue, then start backing up and using your taps to for more health. Just, you know, okay, let's pause, hit the tap. Um, you know, you'll figure out what works for you, and that will change over the course of uh, gearing up and getting AAs. When tanking trash, most of the time you're definitely going to want to be in two-hander mode. You just heal so much by doing more, the more damage that two-hand does that you can overcome uh, most trash once you you get geared up. You know, I still with named, you know, I'll start with the uh, the sword and board. And then if I feel comfortable, I'll switch to the two-hander, usually fairly quick. Maybe I'll start with sword and board, lay down uh, my first set of dots, switch to two-hander, you know. And then I've got leech going or whatever I choose to get going. Um, tanking trash, I'm always always in two-hander mode, though when I'm doing uh, like raid trash in uh, a mission where I'm farming ores, not on a raid, but just farming ro- ores in a raid mission, um, you get two of those yellow mobs, and uh, you know I may switch to uh, sword and board for a bit. But most of the time, two-hander, you want to get used to it. As a Shadow Knight, you'll be much more effective when you are doing the most damage that you can. So another question that comes up is what disc do I use? How do I make that decision? I've basically got three ways. The first way is I have a hotkey that I call disc. And I just click it and it starts a five minute timer because that's when impertinent influence refreshes. And then whatever disc hasn't been used, it'll go and do that one. So there's no thought process. It's generally from the less defensive to the more defensive. And that's for tanking trash. My second way is I have, and if you've seen my setup, I have a series of hotkeys that I select the disc I want, generally like mantle against a name. And it's a very distinct process. And the third way is I have some kind of loose discs and things that um, I want to see when they're down or I want to be like Leech Curse or whatever. I have those in my combat skills ability hotkeys and I would pick those. And... That's how I do discs. So one question arises is what heroic stat? Um, There are threads in in the forum all about this. I'll just tell you my choice. I went heroic dexterity. I'm very comfortable with that decision. Um, I haven't looked back. I could go on, but I think we've covered this, right? So I'll talk to you all later, and I hope I answered a few questions that might be helpful. Bye.